welcome to Ukraine Today, when we're so joined by the acting director of NATO Information Office in Moscow, Robert Pschel. Mr. Pschel, thank you a lot for joining us. Mr. Pschel, you have lived in Russia for almost five years, working as a director of the NATO Information Office, and now you're in Brussels holding the same appointment. Why did you decide to leave Russia, and do you mean the role of the incarnation of the world's evil? Well, I mean, I... I... Actually, uh, it's, I don't know whether it's an achievement or not, it's just a fact that I've, I've lasted, so to speak, uh, the longest from any of my predecessors as the head of the NATO Information Office. Uh, altogether, it's been four and, a half, four and a half years, extremely interesting years. It's never been boring in Moscow. Whatever other words you can choose, maybe you will be right, but boring for sure, it's not been. Um, it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, particularly because obviously uh, when I came, 2010, the situation was much better. We had you know, Lisbon Summit. We, we had partnership. In difficult sometimes, even tumultuous, but partnership. We had cooperation programs, we had exercises, we had lots of things going. Uh, it doesn't mean that NATO was portrayed at that time in Russia as a wonderful organization, but at least I think uh, there was a recognition, even in Russia, that, you know, uh, apart from some serious issues of disagreement, there was a lot of things which were... And we certainly looked at Russia as, as, as a partner. And unfortunately, events, Russians' annexation of Crimea, all its, uh, all its actions vis-a-vis -vis Eastern Ukraine, and, and, and in general, the rhetoric, I mean, the whole lot. It's, it's a package, if you like, of, of very unfriendly, unfriendly acts, violating international law. has changed completely the situation. Uh, so decisions had to be taken by NATO and other organizations that were taken, and, and obviously, inevitably, that, that made uh, the image of NATO in Russia even worse, and the job of the office even more, even more complicated. Russia has been using the conception of hybrid war in Donbass. How is NATO close to understand this phenomenon? And the main question is how to overcome it. You know, it's always interesting to think about some definitions because, you know, a lot of people point out quite rightly that, well, hybrid warfare, there's nothing new. I mean, it's like it's been around. Uh, Tuki did this, mentioned this, it's, you know. It's all true, but, you know, it's the 21st century and, you know, in, in ancient history there was no Russia today, no Gazprom, for example. <laughs> uh, the truth of the matter is that, you know, I'm not saying this as a criticism or self-criticism. I think there has been quite a bit of illusion in Russia, uh, not because people in, in our countries are stupid, but because they really wanted, uh, you know, to have this partnership and they really hoped, and frankly they still do, that Russia could, be, could behave in a different way and we would, let's say, um, try to resolve problems. Uh, but its actions have changed that. And when, it's, when we talk about hybrid warfare, it's, um, it's not just a concept, we've seen it in action. Uh, it's about, you know, uh, some elements from, from the old times, this classical maskirovka that you sort of do one thing and pretend, uh, pretend to do something and then... Uh, uh, it's also the use of blurring, you know, the lines. So you use the military force, but you also lose a lot of propaganda. You try to portray things in a way that look completely different. You blame everybody else for uh, the sins that they have not committed, but that you, you have committed. So in that sense, it's, it's a very sort of... Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a very unpleasant and, 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 and almost you could call it a dirty instrument. But it is a fact. And of course we have to face it. We are facing it. I think we are, to answer directly the question, NATO has been studying NATO nations. We are much, I think, closer to a, understanding this. And we certainly are uh, much closer to having various instruments um, to, uh, to, to respond to that. And by the way, we're not alone because the European Union is doing the same. And I think individual countries, even outside, uh, Europe and uh, in Trans area are doing the same. So I think it's, it's a proof that, you know, <laughs> there is a saying in English, be careful what you wish for. If our Russian colleagues wanted us to be impressed by the adoption of this doctrine and then implementation practice, they have succeeded. But now, of course, you know, we are and we will be responding. That's the truth, because we have no choice. Do you know the mechanism how to switch off Russian propaganda, not only in Russia, but in Europe, for instance, because Russian propaganda machine has a dramatic impact over the world? Well, we are certainly, I mean, for sure, this is, I want to reassure, maybe even our Russian colleagues, but certainly, more importantly, uh, everybody in, in our countries, including in Ukraine, that, you know, 
we will not fight dirty, if you see what I mean. You know, we will not counter propaganda with propaganda. You know, uh, lies have short legs. As an old adage, you said you can, you know, you can, uh, let's say, convince some people all the time. You can convince all the people some of the time, but you can't sort of cheat if you like everybody all of the time. So certainly, we will not go in that direction. But we certainly will, and we are much more active, proactive. And again, I speak about NATO, I speak about the European Union, major countries in in explaining our position, countering some of the most blatant. Uh, myths and, 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 and fabrications. Uh, I think we are and will be doing more of actually, you know, name and shame because, you know, there are clear, there are manipulations of, of such obvious blatant nature that, you know, I mean, stories which are totally fabricated. You know, for instance, uh, president of this country said this and therefore look at etc. No. Check. There has been no speech. It's a total fabrication. Um, and and the, the second, so this has to be uh, certainly uh, shown. We also have to. There is an education last week because you know we over the years because we wanted to believe, and we still do. You know, it's normal. We we would like to hope that that their intentions are good and there may be some problems around it, but. If the data shows something completely different, then people have to be more aware of it. That goes for the media, that goes for civil society, for, I don't know, members of parliament. So there is a lot of explaining also in our countries. And there I say, we also will not shy away from helping the countries which are, if you like, on the front line of this propaganda attack uh, with those means that we can. Again, not offering counter propaganda, but just improving the ability to, um, to, to, to speak back to present the truth uh, and to, yes, ultimately to defend yourself, because that's what it is. These are, if you like, defensive measures against this information warfare, which has been, which has been uh, declared on us without formally being declared. Could you give us some successful examples? Well, I think there are many successful examples in Ukraine itself, because, you know, we're all very impressed with uh, not just the existence, but the, the professionalists, the... Mm, activists of various, uh, you know, NGOs, of private, uh, of private media, of, of a lot of, um, let's say, media-like um, uh, projects in the, uh, on the internet. This is very important because facts are the best, uh, are the best answer to, 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 to lies, to fabrications, to, uh, to um, you know, totally, totally biased uh, coverage. And they also, facts are the best antidote to hate. Because, unfortunately, a large part of this program is based on hate. I mean, that's, that's what I would call it when uh, countries which have, let's say, policies uh, not very uh, much liked currently in Moscow are described in an extremely um, unpleasant, uh, almost insulting way. The last question I would like to ask you about your collection of Soviet Union caricatures of NATO. I know that you are collecting them. Have you already enriched your collection with modern caricatures from Russia? Unfortunately, yes. You know, uh, it's, it's, I started collecting when I came, and I even once gave a long interview about this specific issue, you know, just because I thought, hey, this is like history. They may not be in existence, so I'm interested in history. Uh, so let's preserve something which may not exist. But uh, as I, during my stay in Moscow, uh, this industry has become, you know, uh, revised again and you see a lot of it. it's it's quite amazing because you go to an ordinary souvenir shop in Moscow or St. Petersburg and suddenly you see this I didn't, don't even want to describe them but you know there's some uh, there's some like posters which are totally insulting towards some countries or some leaders of these countries and you know uh, and to be very honest they're much even less funnier they're less funnier than the old ones you know uh, so I would even argue that the previous ones during the Soviet times were probably better quality, you know, regardless of the contents, right? Uh, this one's rather crude, and, and, and um, it's, it's a sign of the times, you know, so I think it goes beyond, you know, it's, I don't think they have much artistic value, so to speak, but, uh, but they do, do offer a further proof that, you know, something wrong has happened within the minds of people in Russia if it's, if they, if, if, if it's okay to present you know, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's another country, leaders in national organizations, some sort of evil uh, monsters, and, 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 and people then think it's a good idea to buy it. That's, you know, that's, that's pretty sad and reflects very badly on, uh, on, the, on the state of mind. Mr. Pichelius, thank you a lot for finding time to talk to us. 
My pleasure. I'm Margarita Sitnik together with Robert Pschel, the acting director of NATO Information Office in Moscow from Warsaw.